Hello, everybody. My name is Sean Morrissey. I'm an electrical application engineer with Health Omega Product Development Systems. And today I'm going to be giving you a step by step walkthrough guide on how to design a patch or microstrip antenna in HFSS. So, for those who don't know, a patch or microstrip antenna is a type of antenna that's known for its low profile and generally known for its advantage of being very easy to first design, get those initial designs done in ease of fabrication. Um, so today I'm gonna show you a um, step-by-step -step guide on how to design a patch antenna in HFSS. So as you can see here, I already have a file open. The very first thing you're gonna wanna do is you are gonna want to draw a box anywhere I'm going to draw a random size, random sh or not random shape, but um, random position. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is double click on the creep box window. And you can see here we have all of its properties. We're going to change the position to be negative, what, what axis, x axis, oops. Um, we're going to call that the width. So this is going to be our substrate. So we're going to say negative sub length divided by two, negative sub width, or oops, let's redo that here. I got my words mixed up. We want that to be length and that to be width. It's just out of preference, whatever makes most sense to you. And then we're going to leave the height at the origin. Um, each of us is going to be like, hey, I don't know what these variables are. We're going to set them. These are just going to be lengths. You can set these to random values right now. They can be changed later. I'm just going to make it um, one millimeter for each. Okay, so we have our X size. We want that to be sub width. The reason that I have this negative sub width divided by two and negative sub length divided by two is that so that I can have the origin centered in our patch antenna. Now, you don't have to do this, however, I find it to be easier. And then we're gonna set this to be sub height. We're, I'm just gonna make this, oh, nope, 0 0.5 for right now. Okay, apply. And as you can see, um, maybe that is a little too thick there. So what you wanna do, you go to design properties. Um, and this keeps everything very organized. I highly recommend doing this. So let's just change this to 0 0.15, make it a bit thinner. There we go. So this is our substrate. To stay organized, we are going to name this just sub. Uh, we can change the material on that later. The next step in this process you're going to want to do is that you want to grab a 2D sheet. And again, just drag and place. Boom, now we have our rectangle one. This is going to be our patch. Um, so we're going to do the same thing here where it's going to be patched width divided by two, negative patch length divided by two, and then we're actually going to rest this on top of our substrate here. Our patch width, let's say it is 0 0.25. Now, of course, these are your arbitrary values. Again, these all depend on your operating frequency. For our X size, it's the same thing. You want to do patch width and then patch length. We're going to hit apply. Boom. You can't really see it right now. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to make it a contrasting color like that. And just to make sure that we're centered here, I'm going to orient it to view from the top looks good so far and since this is a sheet the first thing we want to do is uh, we're going to assume this is going to be an ideal perfect patch now of course that's not going to be the case in reality but for simulation purposes we're going to say this has a perfect e field to represent copper and so now we have our substrate with the top copper layer for our patch and what we're going to do is do the same exact thing for 
the bottom. Now I'm going to try to match it to that, or I'm, I'm going to try to match the dimensions to the ground or to the substrate here for the ground plane. It seems I have, however, you want to stay consistent. So we're going to do sub width divided by two, negative sub length divided by two, and we are going to leave this at zero so it stays on the bottom. So this is going to be sub width, and this is going to be sub length. And the same thing here, um, you don't have to follow this, but I like to keep my materials the same color. So since this is also going to be um, a perfect E field, I'm going to make it purple. So here, now we have two perfect E fields. And just to differentiate them here, name this one patch, and this one ground. So now if you need to change any of your dimensions, um, you don't have to go through and change it manually. You can just go to your design properties window. And if, you, if we change the sub width to say two, everything's going to change with it. Okay, so this was a culprit. <laughs> this should be sub length. Boom. Okay, so everything changed with it. With it you see it got wider and the ground plane changed with it since it is based on the sub length property or width property as well. So here are the first steps of designing the patch antenna. Um, the next step would be, of course, to assign a material to your substrate. Now you can create your own material by pressing add material and changing your relative perm permittivity and permeability as well as your loss tangent to whatever material you are using. As soon as you have updated this table with the correct material characteristics, make sure you name it and you press OK. For this example, we are going to be using a Rogers um, 4350. So that's the first step in creating a patch antenna. So first thing you're going to do is revert the width, or at least in my case, back to one. Um, and then I've gone ahead and calculated the patch width and length for a 10 gigahertz antenna. So the length I calculated was 7.81 millimeters roughly, and then my width was about 9.83. Now, of course, this exceeds our substrate dimensions. So let's change both these to 20. We can leave our height the same and hit apply. Now let's fit all to zoom out. Okay, boom. We have our patch. Now, one thing we're forgetting is our feed. So let's go ahead and just drag and create a new sheet. Go ahead and actually first, let's, let's rename this to B feed. Change the color to purple since this is also going to be a perfect conductor. We are going to assign boundary, perfect E as we did before corresponds to the feed itself. So the same thing that we always do. And then for the actual placement, we want it on the edge of the antenna. So we're gonna do patch length divided by two, and then we want it on top of the substrate. Same thing here, define the variable. I'm gonna have to calculate that. Let's put it at four for right now. Okay, and then our X size is of course going to be feed width. And now here, this is we want to we want the length to be able to fit between this gap here. So of course that's just going to be the sub length divided by two, the uh, subtracted from the patch length. So have that quickly in there, and then boom. So you can see this slither or sliver right here. Um, these two are not yet connected. So what you're going to want to do is select the bigger piece first 
or the more important piece, however you want to define it. You're going to highlight both of these. Go to your Boolean functions here. We want to unite them. So now under patch, you can see that we have the feed. So now this is one object that we are looking at right now. So I've gone ahead and calculated that to be just about 0 0.3 millimeters wide if you are also doing a um, 10 gigahertz. So what we're going to want to do here whoop, is that we're, we're going to want to make our ports. So and I'm going to face the back Y. And since I'm looking at the XZ plane, that's exactly what I'm going to select here to make life a little bit easier. We're going to go ahead and draw a sheet going from here to here. Now that should be good, except that we want this X size to be feed width and our Z size just to make sure we're going to make a negative sub height. Um, now, of course, this is only negative because we're starting at 0 0.5. So we could start from the origin. Now let's just get this correct here. And our Y being sub length. I believe we're negative on that actually, or I will figure out. And then zero millimeters there. I'm gonna hit apply, we're gonna see what happens. Yep, so make that negative. Excuse me, you're going to want that to be sub length divided by two. We all make mistakes every now and then. So then from here, again, you don't have to make this purple. It's I'm just making it symmetric, symmetrical with... What the heck? Oh, I, I hit reset by accident. I'm just making it not symmetrical, but... Um, just match, make it look nice. So rectangle one, we're gonna to wanna to change this to either source or port, whichever one you're more familiar with, more comfortable with. We're gonna assign excitation port, and this is going to be a lumped port with ground as our reference, port one, okay. And then, Boom, that is your patch antenna. Now from here, um, there are actually two more steps. One of which is that you want to create your radiation box. So we're gonna go ahead and draw it, making sure that it encapsulated it all, leave room up top. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is, I like to make this just a little transparent so that it's easy to see through, but you still know it's there. So there you go. You're gonna wanna select, um, you're gonna make sure you're in the faces selection mode. You're gonna select all faces except for the top. Right click, assign boundary, radiation, perfect. So then from here, you're going to add solution setup, Auto, actually, let's not do auto. We're gonna do advanced, just cause I like to be able to say I'm doing 10 gigahertz. From here, you can customize it however you'd like. Okay, um, sweep from five to 15, that's perfect. And then you're just gonna wanna validate. Okay, and then you're all set. And that's how you design a patch antenna.